Hey, 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 what is going on everyone? Well, I am so glad you have took your time to spend with me right here today. I am your co-host for the MRB Wrestling Review Show. We're coming. Mike McRock Wilson, and last night was WWE Monday Night Raw. The show kicked off last night when Vicky Guerrero made the announcement that there's going to be a champion versus champion match. And it will be the WWE Champion, John Cena, going one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion, Alberto Del, R Alberto Del Rio. And the cool thing was, going into this match, uh, the, the showing, you know, old clips of former WWE and World uh, Heavyweight Champions, such as Bruno San Martino, Luthes, Papa... Bob Backlund, Stone Cold Steve Austin, just to name a few, I thought showing all those vignettes of those former champs really brought importance to the main event, which I will get to later on. The Money in the Bank All-Stars, uh, CM Punk, uh, Christian Sheamus, Daniel Bryan Kane, uh, Randy Orton, all came out on the uh, first uh, segment of uh, Monday Night Raw and uh, really, you know, just have at it with words and, you know, just to say who would come out on top and, and such as that. It was a, it was one of those cliched, you know, segments where you have all these guys in one match and they all come out each in individually. And, and I like that CM Punk always mentions that cliched moment out loud. And that's one of those little things I like about CM Punk is that he mentions out loud, you know, his own cliched moments. And uh, what was surprising, the uh, good that came out of that segment was Randy Orton, and I'll tell you why. After dropping uh, Kane with an RKO, he, he just done that slithery thing, that viper-like thing, and really just looked at everyone he is really good. Randy Orton is really good when it comes to his surroundings in the ring. So, the little things like that, and as well with his match with Kane, he got a little more aggressive. Uh, and that also I will get to later on. The, the U.S. WWE Tag Team Champions, The Shield, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins, uh, defeated Christian... And the Usos, pinning Christian 1, 2, 3 in the middle of the ring. And, uh, again, little things. I like the foreshadowing of this possible United States Championship match with uh, Dean Ambrose and, and Christian. And in the same time, those two individuals are in two separate Money in the Bank ladder matches. So that alone is going to be interesting to say the least. And uh, we uh, learned that, that the kickoff... To Money in the Bank is the Tag Team Championship match. I don't know. It, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, sometimes you spend, you know, even just a little bit of time building up to a match. And then it gets plumb onto a kickoff show. Uh, logic, right? <laughs> also last night, uh, Dolph Ziggler uh, defeated Jinder Mahal. I think right now Dolph Ziggler is starting to win over the WWE Universe as a babyface. But he still has to escalate somewhere. So, um, week by week, bit by bit, I'm sort of more and more looking forward to this one-on-one -on -one World Championship match at Money in the Bank. Alberto Del Rio, Dolph Ziggler for the World Champion. Uh, who knows what's going to happen, you know, I got my own predictions, which I will do my own video on the day before uh, Money in the Bank, so I'll just leave it at that for now. Just to tease you fans, just to tease you guys. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned earlier, Randy Orton getting more aggressive, Kane defeated Randy Orton last night with Daniel Bryan as the special guest referee, and... When, when Kane had Daniel Bryan, you know, in the choke call, you know, you're waiting, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it, for Kane to choke slam Daniel Bryan, and whatever reaction he would have gotten if he done so. So, you know, I'm kind of a little disappointed, um, you know, in that sense, but at least Randy Orton, 
you know, is showing his more aggressive side, which really needs to happen, dropping Daniel Bryan after the match. And I like those little things, you know, where Daniel Bryan, you know, he uh, stopped the match due to uh, the disqualification. And, uh, and he restarted the match. It, it was kind of like a play on his own character. So those little things I really absolutely love on Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw itself was an alright show. There were some good things, as I mentioned. And there were also some really not so good things um, that happened on Raw. Uh, such as the uh, next thing I'm, uh, uh, I'm about to talk about. And that's Sheamus going one on one with the returning of Fandango. I mean, here's a guy that you know that just came out of a, a concussion, you know, uh, a few uh, weeks ago when he suffered it on SmackDown, and now he's back. I'm actually glad he's back. But uh, who booked this match? Whoever booked this match really didn't have common sense because here's a guy, Sheamus whose finishing maneuver is a broke kick to the head. And Fondago coming out of a concussion of the head, it really don't make sense, you know, just to book it on that match. I want to know who really booked that match because they really didn't have any common sense when they were thinking about this booking this match. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but... Other than that, you know, Sheamus, you know, defeating Fandango from, you know, via count-out, I'm glad that he didn't bro-kick Fandango. And let's just leave it at that. Also last night, The Miz went one-on-one -on -one and defeated Ryback because Ryback stopped the match. Um, uh, ah, this is the first time that it has happened, and, uh, ah, this just really 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 didn't like you know the end result because it, it just goes to show that Ryback is really really getting under my skin right now and uh, I don't know just stop Ryback stop whining stop complaining let's uh, just make a change uh, I, I'm really lost for words right now for Ryback after he stopped this match. I just went and threw my arms up in the air. I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I'm glad that Chris Jericho saved that segment when he co-breakered Ryback. Uh, that was much needed because Ryback just needs to stop whining and complaining. Go back to that guy he used to be. Uh, also last night, uh, Mark Henry addressed the WWE Universe. So here's the thing about Mark Henry. Mark Henry for the past couple of years has been great. His work has been great in the WWE right now. And uh, uh, with this mean Ryback thing going. Ah, and this is going to be interesting to see. Because I would love to see Mark Henry defeat John Cena. And becoming the WWE Championship. Only because that's the only championship he has never held. And that reason alone should prove something. <clears throat> uh, also last night, CM Punk and the Intercontinental Champion, Curtis Axel, defeated the primetime players. Uh, now here's the interesting dynamic. CM Punk, uh, Curtis Axel, and Paul Heyman. And you see, here's the thing. Uh, CM Punk is now on the fence of, uh, can I really trust Paul Heyman? And uh, as well as Curtis Axel, but there were some things that Curtis Axel really shouldn't be doing that shouldn't have happened, and that was stealing CM Punk's spotlight when he tagged himself in and uh, got the pinfall after CM Punk nailed the go to sleep. I mean, oh, you just don't ever steal anyone's spotlight, don't ever do that, Curtis Axel. But at the same time, I can understand Curtis Axel wanting to make a name for himself and be the, you know, this controversial act will probably get him over somehow. Uh, I don't know if it worked that night because he stole the spotlight for, from CM Punk. And I've said about that. And as well as Caitlyn defeating uh, Alicia Fox and AJ coming out and just being the bully again. 
But for some reason, uh, it, it kind of looked like that Caitlyn now is kind of used to this from AJ. So I don't see this working week to week for AJ. Uh, so I kind of see this fading off and, you know, kind of leaning towards this match where Caitlyn re regains her Divas Championship. Also last night, uh, Stephanie McMahon uh, confronted Vicky Guerrero last night. And there's going to be a job performance evaluation next week. Here's the interesting thing. Um, you got Stephanie McMahon. Um, well, actually, first, here's v here's Fitz McMahon, you know, the uh, chairman of the board. You got uh, uh, Triple H, the COO. And then you got Stephanie McMahon uh, working as also as a high power as well. But in this power struggle, something has to give. I don't know if Vicky Guerrero maybe get the boot or not, but I think... Uh, we can all agree that Brad Maddox will be, you know, uh, the uh, general manager of Raw. <clears throat> but here's the thing. Uh, for next week's job performance evaluation, it was Stephanie McMahon that told Vicky Guerrero that she will be, you know, in a job performance evaluation with Stephanie. There is no mention of Triple H and Vince McMahon, so I think somehow, in some way, you know, Vince McMahon and Triple H are going to gain their two cents, or in this case, you know, two million. And, you know, I kind of, you know, express their words. Uh, Stephanie McMahon, you know, giving a, a job performance evaluation to Vicky Guerrero. Huh. That's, uh, it, it's just one of those uh, predictable things you can expect to happen next week on Raw when these sort of things happen on the show. But uh, who knows? Uh, Stephanie mentioned, you know, WWE is the unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen next, right? Ah, that could be the case, but I don't know. Uh, also last night, uh, Antonio Cesaro defeated Cody Rhodes. When I heard this match was going to come up next, I thought, oh, wow, really? A heel versus heel match. Who is the audience going to cheer for? So it kind of had that boring factor already. So, you know, it was kind of off the fence. I really didn't pay much attention much of this match due to the fact that it was heel versus heel. But, you know, with Antonio Cesaro defeating Cody Rhodes, I can understand that. But see, here's the thing. At the Money in the Bank brie uh, uh, World Championship briefcase, Antonio and Cody Rhodes are in it. So it's kind of, you know, one of these things where, huh, who is the guy that uh, that has the most to lose when it comes to this Money in the Bank briefcase? Cody Rhodes, for sure, right? Uh, Damien Sandow, I could still see Damien Sandow somehow maybe trying to cheat his way to this match. But he's still acting as that dark horse. There, there's only a couple of guys. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Wade Barrett are the two I'm interested in to see if one of them is going to win this, you know, this briefcase upcoming at Money in the Bank. Uh, who knows? We'll see. Um, I will give you my predictions within a couple of weeks, like I said. And with that being said, the main event was the WWE Champion John Cena versus the World Heavyweight Champion Alberto Del Rio. Here's the interesting thing. I don't think that match lived to the hype of all those vignettes that, you know, they were shown earlier. Um, so, so it was kind of a little off in that sense where it didn't live up to the hype of all those past champs that Running at Raw showed. You know, like I mentioned before, Bruno San Martino, Luthez... You know, Bob Backlund, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and, you know, uh, some guys that I have mentioned and haven't mentioned. Well, if you saw Raw, you know who they were. But, you know, with that said, uh, the match really didn't live up to that hype. It, it was actually an alright match. It's just the hype of it that kind of fell flat. But with that being said, uh, John Cena defeated Alberto Del Rio. And now that uh, I heard that Ricardo Rodriguez is now suspended due to a wellness policy, so 
um, it's going to be hard, you know, to see Alberto Del Rio without Ricardo for a while. Hopefully, it's just for the 30 days. So, we'll see what happens. And Monday Night Night Raw closed off with a Wyatt Family promo. And they will be debuting next week. Here's the interesting thing. Even though that element of surprise is God, I was hoping for an unpredictable debut. The only thing right now is just, who are they going to attack? Here's the thing. I don't think they should attack, you know, like a group of people. Uh, I think they should single out one person because, you know, they'll have more leverage that way. It's just now, who is it going to be? Uh, I, I can see them going for a top tier guy. I have all these crazy ideas in my head. Uh, Randy Orton, Sheamus, Daniel Bryan, uh, CM Punk, uh, anyone uh, that they can go after. Who will it be? We'll see what happens next week on Monday Night Raw. And that was my review of last night's show. I'm your co-host for the MRB Wrestling Review Show, Mike McRock Wilson. And to all you viewers watching, get plenty of rest, and always do your best.